What is the best starter set for D&D? And is it the Shadow Dark Quick Start set? This is something I've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks. I've been playing a lot of Shadow Dark. I think I'm having like my 36th session of a big Shadow Dark campaign, which is as big as like some of the D&D campaigns I've had. So it's a very, very big. But I've been thinking a lot about the Shadow Dark Quick Start set. And in particular, if somebody came to me and said, hey, I'd like to learn D&D, will you teach me? Am I better off starting with a Shadow Dark set than I would be starting off with some of the D&D stuff? So that is the question that I am positing. And I think the real answer, just to get to the bottom line up front, it really depends on what you and your players are really looking for to determine whether or not Shadow Dark uh, is going to meet that need or whether you're better off starting with like the D&D starter set for Dragon of Stormwreck Isle, a, a starter set that I really like. And the one, the big question is, are you going to be building your characters or not? If you're building characters, I think character building in Shadow Dark is significantly easier and faster than trying to teach somebody by building a character in D&D 5th edition. So that is a big one. So why would we even consider Shadow Dark as a good way to introduce people to D&D? And the big reason is the super simple character design and character creation. There is no giant skill list. There's no proficiency bonus. Trying to explain to a player what a proficiency bonus is is really, really weird. And most of the time, you just don't do it. Instead, D&D Beyond either adds it in automatically or some other virtual tabletop character builder automatically adds proficiency bonus. But people are looking at it like, why is my strength a two, but my athletic score is a four? And like, well, that's your proficiency bonus. Well, what's a proficiency bonus? Well, it's based on your level, but it's not linear to level so you starts at two and it ends at six and you have to look at your level to see when your proficiency goes up it's also an abstract concept because it's sort of like your generic skill bump right it's it's like you're you know it's the modifier that you add to skills that you're trying it's really a pain to try to explain what a proficiency bonus is well guess what shadow dark doesn't have a proficiency bonus it's far easier shadow dark focuses heavily on the die roll and less on modifiers you don't add modifiers for damage for example you just roll the die and that's the amount of damage you do significantly easier roll a d8 that's how much damage you do super super easy to teach people how that works simplified movement there's no movements in in squares there's no feet based movement instead you have near and you have you have you have close near far and i know my favorite one double near double near is a little bit of something that you got to explain but generally speaking movement is streamlined which means you're focusing more on the characters and the scene in the game and the action that's going on in the game i am a huge fan of abstract distances and abstract movement in my rpgs the fact that shadow dark embraces that has made that really really good for me i i like that so much more it really shadow dark really has a focus on the in-world choices that characters are making. This is sort of that whole like, the whole difference between sort of modern RPGs and old school RPGs is that modern RPGs often figure out situations by rolling a die. If you want to figure out there's a secret door, you roll a perception check. If your check is higher than a certain amount, you find the door. It doesn't explain how your character found the door. The player doesn't say what they did in order to find the door. You can add that stuff in pretty easily. You can say like, well, how are you looking for the door? And if the way they're looking has no way that they would find the secret door, then they don't find it if on the other hand i say well i thoroughly search the room you're like we're all perception check shadow dark doesn't have that shadow if you say when you say that you're going to search the room what do you do to search the room and then they say things like i go and i examine the cracks in the walls are there any cracks that are deeper than other ones well yes some of them are oh that's interesting can i stick a lever in there yes you can if i pry the lever does something move yes actually when you do that the whole wall shifts and you see that there's a secret passage so there's a lot more about the decisions that the players are making on behalf of their characters and how that interacts with the world instead of making checks for everything. That's a big distinguishing feature between the two games. I'm not judging one way or the other. I do both. I have fifth edition games where we roll for checks and I have Shattered Art games where they do their in-world examination. I think there's advantages to both. Uh, but that is something that can be easier to teach a new player to say, to, to keep them into the world and understand what's different about this game. You describe how you search for things. I don't tell you how you search for them. I don't tell you what you find. You, you know, when I tell you what the situation is, you can ask clarifying questions. I will clarify those, those answers for you. And then you can figure out more. That is something that can be a good way to get somebody drawn in. One great thing about it is the price. The Shadow Dark Quick Play rules, you can buy the print and PDF version for $19. I like this so much that I bought myself an extra set. So I think I have three sets, two of them still wrapped up 
of the Shadow Dark Quick Play guys because I just love them. They really feel like the old school version of D&D. They feel like you could put a little white box around this. It'd be kind of cool if they had a white box, but then the price would go up. And you get a really solid player guide that tells you how to play and a really solid game master guide that has enough material in it to run a lot of adventures. This isn't just like running one quick adventure and then you're done. This has enough monsters in it, enough magic items and enough material to probably play for a good a good bunch of sessions. The adventure that is in here is actually a pretty lengthy adventure that can take you up to third level it also includes when you buy the physical version these quick play cards of npc or not npcs the quick play cards of the player characters that you can use to actually run the game beautiful art on one side really good you know easily described character sheet on the other side that you can use for the player so really excellent stuff but here's where it's really cool the pdf is free it's absolutely free to pick up the PDF of this, which includes the pre-gen characters, which includes the books. It has everything in it, and it's completely free. One major advantage to this, beyond the fact that you can go download it, and you should. You should go get it right now, and you should go check it out. If you've never checked out Shattered Ark, there's no reason not to go download it and read it. But even better is you can send the PDF of it, or you can send the link here to your player so that they can get it for free. And that way they can read up on it and they can have their own copies of it on whatever device they've got or anything like that and have that available to them for free. There's a real advantage in putting like player's guides out for free. And it means that you're not expecting your player to have to go spend a bunch of money on something that they're not sure about yet. If the player guide is free, they can just go get it. And that means there's no reason your players can't all have a copy of this when you're playing at your game. That is a really big, big advantage for that. One other really interesting thing is even if you decide that this is really a jump board into a more complicated 5th edition game, even if you're planning to go to 5th edition, all of the stuff that your players learn when they're playing Shadow Dark can be brought to 5th edition because Shadow Dark under the hood is mostly 5th edition mechanics. The whole ability score bumps are the same, how you roll your dice are the same, the, the types of dice that you use are the same, D20 rolls are the same. There's some new stuff that they'll have to learn, like skills, like proficiency bumps bonuses like ability checks all the there's a lot of different like adding modifiers onto damage rolls there are things that they would learn if they move from shadow dark to fifth edition but almost all of it is additive almost all of it is new stuff that they would add on yes they'll have to relearn how the the magic system works there's a few things that they have to learn but a lot of the material that's inside the shadow dark books can be and i'm going to use the word upgraded but i know that that's kind of insulting to say that while well, shadow dark is below fifth edition it's really just two different kinds of games but you can move from from one game to the other and all of the knowledge that your new players have picked up from shadow dark can be brought with them when they go to fifth edition now there's one big reason why i think that shadow dark might not be the absolute best starter set for the game and that's its lethality now, one difference is you know the lethality up front. And if, if you're a GM who is going to be teaching people how to play using Shadow Dark rules, you can do probably three things to make it better, even though it's as lethal as it is. One is explain to the players how lethal it is and that almost certainly one or more of them are going to get killed in their scenario, that it's very easy to be killed in this game. And, and that's an expected feature of this game. And that's different from modern iterations of D&D. Two is have a bunch of extra characters on hand. Make it easy for people to get back into the game. So when their character dies, you say, oh, that was really funny. You can go over the top, but here's the other new character. So they don't get tied to any one character. Instead, they're really learning the game and they can still participate in the game. And then three is in the story of the world, make sure there's a good reason for new characters to be able to jump in. When I was running a level zero gauntlet in Shadow Dark, I had 40 different character sheets ready to go. And I had a really easy way to drop in new characters and have them show up during the game. I did the same thing when I ran my Ravenloft game. It was like, you're in the cart and you're all had to Ravenloft, but there's like 30 of you in there, but only the first five are gonna be the ones going in. So it's like, oh, these are other people that have been going there in the past. There, we're able to drop them in. That way, the most important thing when characters die is making sure that you can that players can still stay engaged with the game. So you want to make sure to include that if you're going to have the lethality of the game. Now, another thing that you can do if you want to kind of work with the lethality of uh, Shadow Dark, and I went over to the Shadow Dark Discord and I asked, like, hey, 
how bad is this from a shadow dark perspective? And I kind of laid myself out on the shadow dark altar, prepared for them to all pierce into my skin with their wavy obsidian daggers uh, as a heretic of shadow dark. And I got a little of that, which was how about if you just maximize the hit points at first level? And some people were all like, oh, that's absolute heresy. It's more important that they understand how dangerous it is and behave and act, recognizing the fact that they can get killed in a single hit. But then people also brought up, well, actually, and I think Kelsey confirmed this, a lot of the character pregens have hit points that are higher. Not all of them, but like this fine fellow, Jorbin Ironhelm, a dwarf fighter, has 10 hit points. 10 is a ton of hit points at first level. This fella... This this young lady, Uriel, is an elf fighter. She has eight hit points. So not all of them do. Some have three. Here's a three hit pointer. Here's a three hit pointer. So we got like three of them, four of them have three hit points. But then we've got seven hit points. We've got five hit points. They actually have more hit points than you might expect for a Shattered Art character. We had a Shattered Art character who had three hit points at third level because they rolled a one three times for their, for their hit points. So you can definitely have some low ones. But if you want... And I give you permission. Other people can yell at me. Boost up their hit points a little bit. If you want, just give them five extra hit points. If you just want them to understand the game, they're just learning for the first time. You'd rather they don't get killed right away. Just give them a little bit of extra hit points. Say they have five extra. Maybe some of them do. So you could say like, or, or start them. And probably better is start them off at max hit points. So whatever the max hit points are, and you can even ch- you know change them from the way they are in the pregens and say like, you have six hit points, you have eight hit points, you have 10 hit points. That way they have just a little bit more so that maybe it takes two or three hits to knock them out instead of one. I think that might be a better time for new for new gms so one of the things that's kind of funny though and i was thinking about it just this morning before i was going to talk about this this whole thing uh was am i being a hypocrite because i'm the one who complained about dragon of ice spire peak having ochre jellies at first level and having a manticores at first level who could definitely wipe out characters in one hit and i complained about that saying like why are we putting out starter sets and the, and and lost mind of found delver also had like a really brutal first fight and i was like are we doing this just to weed out players from the hobby to say like oh yo you know you had a bad time so now you don't play so I complained about that fact because I don't feel like you should wipe out characters just willy-nilly in the beginning of your starter set. I don't know that that's the best experience for that. And I actually recommended doing things like giving them the spell aid right off the bat so that everybody had five extra hook points and they could last a little bit longer. And that way it wasn't so bad. Dragon of Stormwreck Isle, the latest D&D starter set, actually says like if they all wipe out, they are all brought back by the main NPC and they can start again. So it has sort of a lower floor. You can't really lose. You can't get wiped out. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, that's just training wheels D&D. Well, that's okay for crying out loud. Let people play and enjoy their characters. Now, I think that it's not quite so hypocritical in the fact that when you are teaching using Shadow Dark, you can explain to them, A, you're probably going to die a lot. And B, we have other pregens and other ways for you to come in. So if your character dies, you can get another character and get back into the game pretty quickly. So I think that there are still ways to do that. Whether or not Shadow Dark is the best way to teach people D&D is kind of a question for you and for the people you're teaching. A lot of it is what do they bring to the table already? Are they big fans of anime? Are, have they already played Baldur's Gate 3 and they already understand a lot about how 5th edition works? What kind of fiction do they understand? What kind of video games that they've played? If they're really big into Dark Souls, maybe the Shadow Dark is not so bad because they're used to getting killed all the time. What are the things that they're bringing to the table? And then that will help you decide which version of D&D you want to be teaching them but I'll tell you when it comes to the simplicity of the mechanics the focus on what the fun of the game is the fact that you can download free rules for it Shadow Dark the Shadow Dark quick play rules really feel like an outstanding way to teach new players how to play D&D